Le gouvernement a présenté au début. At the beginning of January, the government presented a program on what they call getting out of the financial crisis and sent it to Brussels. At that time, the OGBL warned them that their so-called exit strategy was too soon and too brutal, and that their fundamental ideas will lead to a policy of austerity that will negatively affect purchasing power and will have a severe impact on the national economy. What the government presented to us last Saturday, the 10th of April, confirms this analysis, a policy that aims to cut social benefits, in particular family benefits. This time there are cuts that are very severe and put to us with no possibility of a counterpart. This is equally valid for the indexation of salaries that has come up in the discussions with the government, which we absolutely do not understand, because the two parties have expressed numerous times that they are there for the wage and pension indexation system. Now I have heard the Prime Minister declare that he is for salary indexation, but he no longer wants inflation to be based on the cost of petrol. There will no longer be adjustments of pensions in relation to the evolution of salaries, as was always the case. This will result in 50 million euros less purchasing power for pensioners, whether they are residents here or live elsewhere, and receive a pension. The family allowances equally affect the cross-border workers, because the difference will decrease and they will have fewer benefits. Why would they want to eliminate Czech repairs? For many employees, Czech repairs are part of their contracts. To take this away is to take part of the agreed salary away. Reducing displacement costs by half will also take a lot of money off people, and particularly those who need to come from far away, and who do not have the possibility to take public transport. The government has also said it wants to make public transport cuts with a view to making savings of up to 20 million euros. They propose to do this by eliminating certain bus lines that do not have enough people who use them. The ultimate victims of the proposals are families with children and employees and pensioners with a low income. The big winners in this situation are those who are at the source of the crisis, the banks. They will not pay a cent. Other winners are those with a very high income, because we often talk about their contributions, but we don't know what their contributions are and what the proportion of their contribution will be in relation to what everybody else has to give. Last year, on the 16th of May, employees affected by the crisis demonstrated in Luxembourg City because many salaries are increasing at a much slower rate, if at all. In addition, unemployment has risen and work pressures have increased. For employees to feel the brunt of it in more than one respect is unacceptable for us and we are confident that there are other solutions. We are not against an increase in tax for those with a high income. This does not just mean those who have a high salary. People need to be assessed in many respects, such as in relation to how many properties they own and whether or not they have children. We would be in favour of somebody who earns more than €125,000 per year, for example, to pay a special solidarity tax to combat the effects of the crisis. The government has proposed a special crisis or super tax that will be paid by everybody, and that includes those that have a salary so low that they are currently exempt from paying taxes at all. Before attacking people's purchasing power, it would be favourable to do an inventory of everything the nation is planning on investing in, and to carefully review whether the investments are necessary for the economy and society. Those investments that are less necessary should be delayed and other luxury investments should only even be considered when the financial climate is stable. If there is no agreement, the government will put forward its own proposals. If their proposals stay the way they are now, the government needs to know that if they do not want to listen to us, the unions, who are still an important force in Luxembourg and represent many people, will mobilise our affiliates. The two governmental parties know that many people were in favour of their parties precisely because they considered them to have social tendency. If they become disillusioned and realise that this is not the case, there is a risk of this having political effects and even movements like in other countries where people ask, why should we have an interest in politics if politicians always go against our interests? Why is it we should still be interested in politics if politics is always a politics that goes against our interests?